Hi everyone, this is Anita Ladhani, licensed clinical social worker and energy practitioner. And today I wanna to talk to you about boundaries. What are boundaries? So boundaries are actually physical barriers, right? They're barriers that separate us from outside world. We may have a fence around our house, which is a physical boundary, but it's used as a metaphor when it comes to relationships and interactions and friendships. Because a lot of times what happens is when we are in relationships with other people, we tend to give them consent, give them permission to really come close enough where our boundaries start to become violated. Or some people, if they're narcissists, they will just violate and barge into your boundary. So let's talk about what types of boundaries there are. Of course, you've got the physical boundaries, but then you've got the mental, emotional boundary, okay? The mental boundary, you've got uh, sexual boundary and you've got spiritual boundary okay so let's talk about what those are so having a physical boundary is really important because though you may have someone violate your physical boundary if they're constantly touching you if they're constantly you know giving you physical rubbing your back or rubbing your shoulder or you know caressing your hand and if you're not comfortable with that that's your boundary being violated um that you may not want a hug from everyone. And if they're insisting on that, that's your physical boundary being violated. Um, intellectual boundaries are basically where somebody is not respecting your thoughts and your feelings. They're criticizing, they're belitt belittling, um, they are putting you down. You know, it's it, you can agree to disagree in any situation. You know, I've had discussions with complete polar opposites and we still manage to be respectful of each other's intellectual boundary. Emotional boundary is basically where, you know, you are, when you, emotional boundary refers to a person's feelings. So for example, you know, if you are someone that lacks emotional boundary, you are someone that tends to overshare your personal uh, information. You know, it's, it, you may have someone that comes to you and they just start telling you all these gory details about their first date or their first you know, whatever the case might be. And you're not comfortable listening to that because you don't have that relationship with them. And if they're just sharing that, they are violating your emotional boundary. Or someone may really ask you very intrusive questions, personal questions. And if you're not comfortable sharing, that's your emotional boundary being violated. So you need to like set that, right? Sexual boundary um, is basically happens between sexual partners where you are forced to do something that in the confines of a bedroom that you're not comfortable doing. Now, sure, what two adults do, two consenting adults do is completely up to them. But that means it's two consenting adults. If you're not okay with it, but you're going along with it, you are compromising your sexual boundary. And then you also have, you know, um, time boundaries. You've got spiritual boundaries. So time boundaries are basically, you know, people who will just you know like uh they don't know how to set healthy boundaries in terms of how much time they give to others versus how much time they spend with their own self um they will violate your time boundaries by maybe volunteering you to help out somewhere where you didn't agree to maybe it's a boss that will sign you up and say oh you know anita is going to work this weekend when anita has plans for the weekend but now anita has to cancel those plans because her time boundaries were violated Okay, so those are some boundaries, some types of boundaries. Now, also, there's different degrees of boundaries. There are really rigid boundaries, there are porous boundaries, and there are healthy boundaries. Ideally, you want healthy boundaries. You know, ideally, rigid boundaries are not okay. Rigid boundaries are very closed off, very guarded, where a little too extreme. People with rigid boundaries may seem detached. They may keep others at a distance to avoid, you know, any real possibility of connection and rejection. Uh, they may be the ones that are unlikely to ask for help. Uh, they may avoid intimacy and close relationships. You know, um, a healthy boundary is someone who values their own opinion, but also respects other people's opinions. You know, they don't compromise their values for others. You know, they share in personal information, but in an appropriate way. Um, and they understand that no is a complete sentence. They accept that. Um, what else do you need to know about boundaries? Why is it important to set them? Because it's self-respect. Um, when do your boundaries get violated? 
all the time because we don't even realize our boundaries are violated because again, knowledge of self is power. So when you don't even realize that this is happening, how can you change it, right? How do you set boundaries? How do you set boundaries? Where well, you set boundaries, why do we not? So let's talk about why we don't set boundaries. We don't set boundaries because we're afraid. Because we're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of criticism. We're afraid of being abandoned. We're afraid of confrontation. We're afraid of guilt. You know, we are taught, um, we were never taught healthy boundaries. And and sometimes if you are in a relationship that's, you know, a domestic violence relationship where you're physically not safe, you may have safety concerns for why you're not able to establish boundaries. Now, what do you do in that extreme case? In that extreme case, you know, reach out and get help. There are every city has a network of domestic violence providers, domestic violence services that you can get anonymous help and you can get support to get out of that situation. But for the rest of us, you know, um, it's important to set healthy boundaries because healthy boundaries allow us to have high self-esteem, allows us to feel safe. It uh, protects, you know, allows us to have equal partnership. But how do you set them, guys? <clears throat> how do you set them? Great question, right? You set them when you start to recognize them, first of all, and then you slowly start to speak and speak up and, and, and or either you remove interactions with certain people or if not you learn to stand up and you speak up for yourself you know you learn to use as few words as possible to stand up for yourself because the one thing you don't want to do is give too long of an explanation of why you don't want someone touching you someone speaking to you that way because that just gives them um because they usually you know people who violate our boundaries are usually narcissists and they're they're a little bit sociopathic and they're disrespectful. And so when you give them too much of an explanation, it just gives them ammunition to use against you. Instead, don't, don't justify, don't get angry, don't apologize, just state the facts and that's it. You know, you're not responsible for other people's feelings. You're not responsible for other people's emotions. So learning boundaries, setting boundaries is a process, you know, work with someone, work with a therapist, you know, do some research. Like I said, Dr. Ramani is excellent. And the first thing is to recognize that this is happening in your life, recognize which, where and who, which boundaries being violated, who are the people or person violating your boundary, and then come up with a game plan of how you're going to address that. Okay. Take care, love and light. God bless.